Hey, what's up? It's your soccer zombie, Tom Franklin here, and I'm just like you, St. Louis. I'm waiting for the official news on Marcel Hartle to break at the time that this is being recorded. It's going to happen at some point. Tom Bogert, Manuel Veth, others have said that it's essentially a done deal, just needs to put pen to paper, basically. So we're all waiting for our apps to go crazy. We're waiting for the Twitters to go crazy, announcing that our new talisman on offense is coming to help revive this St. Louis City offense that needs some help. Oh, you may have noticed I am wearing a Donnie Rovers uh, kit today. No particular reason, except just to give them a quick shout out. They have signed former LA Galaxy forward and actually kind of a legend in Doncaster from before. Billy Sharp did do 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 do. Billy Sharp did do 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 do. Anyway, congratulations to any Donnie fans that might be watching this. Now back to Hartle. So Hartle is reportedly coming, but we don't have really much context to work off of here as far as what type of a player that he is. We've seen the stats. We've He's come in with a lot of hype, but I wanted to talk to someone that's actually laid eyes on Hartle over the years, someone that has researched the second Bundesliga extensively over the years. And for that, I am introducing you to Matthew from the second Bundesliga podcast to answer some questions about the type of player that Hartle is, that the type of player that St. Louis is getting, and just exactly why he's coming to St. Louis maybe over staying in Europe and playing for, you know, maybe even in the Champions League. What is so attractive about the MLS? That's what I asked Matthew here in a set of five questions that I'll start off with right now. Just exactly, Matthew, what kind of player is St. Louis getting in Hartle? Well, someone with versatility, creativity, and now shown to be a serious attacking threat um, with, with, with the goal scoring that he provided this season. So in terms of like a system, he plays in a four, they played a 3-4-3 at St. Pauli, um, which allows versatility. You know, this season he played more often as a number eight alongside Jackson Irvine. However, there were times where, especially in the second half of the season, he played as an attacking winger on the left-hand side, or even as a false nine um, when Herzler was sort of looking for something a little bit different. They tried uh, Johannes Eggestein as the number nine, um, but they also added um, Ayosha Kemlein from Union Berlin, and that allowed Hartle to, to play a little bit further up the pitch. Um, he can play in so many different systems and, and, and formations um, and positions. He's typically, I would say, best as in either an eight or a 10. That's where you can get the most out of his performance. Um, but he's shown that he can play a multitude of different positions and play them very well. Um, he's excellent from set pieces. Um, especially corner kicks, he was he was he was very dangerous um, over the over his time in Bundesliga too, and with uh, whether that's been with Union or Union Berlin or Arminia Bielefeld, um, and of course St. Pauli. So yeah, it, it's kind of interesting that um, prior to this season, he never scored double digits. I think his highest score total was either it was you know, it was less than ten, and. Um, He's shown, yeah, he, he absolutely burst on the scene um, with the goal scoring output, and it was mostly impressive. Now, again, we haven't seen much of Hartle ourselves, so what? What's a good player comparison for the type of player that Hartle is? We've heard Hani Mukhtar mentioned. We've heard even like a poor man's Christian Eriksen. But who, in your eyes, would you say Hartle compares to, Matt? This is quite difficult because I can I can tell you who who he compares to in in Bundesliga two. Um, more than anything uh, but for me Laszlo Benish is probably the best comparison you can get or a Jack Clark from Sunderland it, he's just such a versatile player can play in so many different positions as mentioned before very strong in the midfield but you want him to be as an attacker he, he, I think that's where he excels he's not much of a defensive eight if you're playing in that sort of 3-4-3 uh, system that uh, Fabian Hertzler implemented at St. Pauli but for me, um, you, you want him to be in a position where he can showcase his offensive threat because that's where he's at his best when he's got the ball. He's either driving at um, the defense, dead ball situations he's also extremely strong at. And um, yeah, now he can score goals, which is um, probably the, 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 com the most complete form of Marcel Hartle that we've seen, um, which was what we saw uh, last season. So... I, I would say I would say Laszlo Benish is probably the closest from what I saw this season, 
and in a general sense, just his development over the course of uh, the 18 months under Fabian Hertzler has allowed him to become more of that goal-scoring threat than he otherwise would have been previously. Now, we've seen the stats, 17 goals, 12 assists this past season, but just how instrumental was Hartle to St. Pauli's promotion? Like, did the offense, like, run through him? Uh, he was extremely instrumental in their promotion, led the team in goals and assists with 17 and uh, goals and 12 assists, so 29 score involvements, which was one of the best in the league. Um, how, you know, did the offense run through him? I would say they were, it's a yes and no. Like, obviously the numbers back up that, yes, um, he had a massive contribution to what they did on the offensive end. Um, was it effective? Absolutely. <laughs> And again, the numbers do back that up. But I would say that they they had such a fluid system under Hertzler. There were more than just Hartle. You know, guys like um, Dapo Afalion, for example, Manalis Saliakis. In fact, 60% of crosses came from that particular wing on the right-hand side. Excuse me. So, you know, if you're, if you're looking at sort of was Hartle the sole reason why it, no, I would say not. Um, but he just got the he he got the rewards for his work rate and, and being in the right positions and and being able to create so much. I mean, you know, to put in perspective, the 17 goals this season um, that was fourth best in the division. He was the best amongst midfielders by quite a significant number. Um, but you know, he's only five goals behind the top scorers in the league, which were Harris Tabakovic of Hertha. Christos Solis from, from Fortuna Dusseldorf and, and Robert Glatzel from Hamburger as well. Um, so in that perspective, you can you can say that, um, you know, it was effective to run through Hartle and, and Hartle is often the focal point for them um, in an attacking sense. But it wasn't just him, it was very much a team oriented effort. So he did have a major role in their promotion, but there certainly were more outlets than just Marcel Hartle. So what worked for Hartle in St. Pauli that didn't work in Arminia Bielfeld, Union Berlin, and FC Kulin, his previous stops before then? He was pretty unremarkable up until this past season. What clicked? I would say system had a big part. You know, we saw the turnaround statistically with his play moving more as a number eight uh, in the Hertzler system. Um, that certainly worked. It, it worked to his strengths and allowed him to be a bit more free-flowing, a bit more creative. For me, he, he he's a classic Bundesliga 1.5 player. Now, allow me to explain. He's always been a very solid Bundesliga 2 player. I mean, the season with Armenia Bielefeld, I think it's a bit underrated. You know, sure, he only scored one goal. But he had 13 assists and he, and he was one of the league leaders in that category the season that Bielefeld gained promotion. And... As fantastic as he was in that moment, in that season, the following campaign, it didn't really pan out yet. I think he played 22 games and failed to score uh, or even had an assist in, in that time. And the following season, it was, became clear that whether it was Frank Kramer or Uwe Neuhaus, there wasn't really a place for Hartle in the Bundesliga aspects of Armenia Bielefeld. So, that's why the move to St. Pauli happened. But this is the third team he's gained promotion with. And it's pretty clear that he is an exceptional Bundesliga 2 player at 28. <laughs> now, unfortunately for him, he is in that category of he's probably too good for Bundesliga 2, but has shown very little return at, at, top, at the top flight. You know, Simon Torotto is another player. Like Simon Torotto is the all-time leading goal scorer in Bundesliga 2, but very rarely did he feature heavily in the goal scoring charts in his time in the Bundesliga, whether it be Stuttgart or Schalke or Köln. You know, it, it, it had been a struggle for him, but he will go down as one of the all-time greats in Bundesliga 2, but less remembered for his time in the Bundesliga. And you, you could say the same with, with Hardo, where he didn't really get a chance at Union in the Bundesliga to an extent. And now you... You kind of see why St. Pauli perhaps maybe decided to let his contract run out um, at the end of the season. Um, but, you know, clearly he's an exceptional player and you put him with the right personnel and you allow him to, to sort of play his 
role of football, you'll find that he's gonna he's gonna fit quite well. Um, so yeah, I, I I think I think at times it's a little bit unfair because like his time at Unione was he was quite young, he was still developing, you know, he was pretty fresh from Cologne and um, really excelled in Bielefeld. Um, but ultimately, I think St. Pauli and especially Fabian Hertzler being such such a, a pretty very intelligent footballing mind was able to get even more out of him and, and we finally got to see the goal scoring um, unlocked essentially we there, there was sort of like a, a joke in many ways that you know he, he almost had like a bad luck charm in front of goal because he knew how to get to so many great positions but you know more often than not you would you would be like oh well he probably won't score from here but he has shown you know the clinicalness that um, and I, I guess that comes with the confidence as well to, to be a bit more you know, aggressive in the final third and uh, not always have to look for the ball but if the, the shot's open have a dip and yeah I mean he he's done so many good things for St. Pauli over the last three seasons and I would say it's kind of a shame that he is departing but just because you would love to have seen him at St. Pauli in the Bundesliga but I suppose you know like many things these you know sometimes relationships don't last and and ultimately he probably felt he wanted a new challenge and and um yeah i guess major league soccer was was the challenge he was looking for so um yeah i mean it, it's going to be really fun hopefully um for mls fans and, and and obviously st louis fans if um if he does end up playing there and, and hopefully he will get to play the kind of role that has allowed him to excel um throughout his time at st Paul. And finally, the big question here that I think a lot of us are wondering, what would possibly attract Hartle to come to the United States and play in the MLS versus playing in the Champions League for that rumored French club or Turkey or even staying in Germany? That's a, you know, that's a really interesting question because obviously MLS continues to grow. Uh, there's more expansion coming. And uh, as someone who perhaps would like to see pro relegation, um, involved in MLS, I think that would be just to, just to bring that jeopardy in. But then again, does it make the league less attractive? I'm not so sure. Really, um, perhaps it's financial. Not knowing the ins and outs of the deal, um, I would I would think financial would have to come into play. And you know, to to pull someone at that age with c- coming off one of their best seasons career wise. I would think there would be some sort of financial pull. Um, you know, he played with Joachim Nilsson at Armenia Bielefeld. Perhaps that's a factor as well. You know, the familiarity with him and, and perhaps he sold him on, on the experience of playing for St. Louis. Um, you know, looking at the, the numbers this season, attendance-wise, clearly that there is a there's a strong fan base um, within St. Louis for, 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 for football. And I, I suppose a city that's really starved on a lot of professional fronts. You know, you've got the St. Louis Blues who were fledgling this season in the National Hockey League. Um, they don't have an American football team anymore because the Cronkies moved them to Los Angeles. Um, I don't know how big the UFL is in in, in St. Louis with the Battle Hawks. Um, and then you've got the Cardinals uh, for, for Major League Baseball. So, I mean, you know, I guess in terms of maybe a hardcore fan base, you know, St. Louis as a football club has a bit more going for it. Um, and I guess I guess when you look at like some of the names that are playing in, in, in MLS and and those who could potentially be arriving, I suppose that you know maybe there's more interest in the league than you know playing elsewhere. I, I'm not entirely sure. Perhaps he he wanted to play in the states at some stage. I I felt he would. I felt he was going to stay in Europe um, personally, and I think um, you know maybe down the line a, a move to MLS, but. Obviously, has seen enough to, to to really have the appetite to to join a club in MLS, and yeah, we'll see how he goes. But um, yeah, I think overall they're getting you know St. Louis. Should they still get over the line, which it sounds like it will, um, yeah, they're getting a pretty incredible player and someone who's coming off uh, an astounding season, even for him. 
Thank you so much, Matt, for your perspective on Marcel Hartle and this extended look at him. For more perspective on the second Bundesliga, maybe some players at St. Louis might be getting in the future, check out the second Bundesliga podcast wherever you get your podcast from. And be sure to follow Matthew on Twitter. This is your soccer zombie, Tom Franklin, here. And if you want more analysis on Marcel Hartle, you can check out my recent video on him I did already. Matt actually assisted on it, kind of like a Marcel Hartle through ball in the final third. It was very effective. 